and welcome to Great Getaways. On today's show, we're going to take you to Cadillac, Michigan, one of the few places we've never visited before. We got a call from local guide Randy Cornell, who was telling us about the excellent fishing, the great canoeing, craft beers. With all that said, we were on our way. So stick with us as we go to Cadillac, Michigan for some outdoor adventures and some indoor stops. We start our trip with local fishing guide and owner of Karma Charter Service, Captain Randy Cornell. We're here today, we're in Cadillac, Michigan. We're going out to do a little bit of fishing with Randy right now. Randy, I'm gonna let you tell us where we're at. Sure enough, Tom, glad to do that. We are on Lake Michel, uh, which is part of the two lakes that's in Cadillac. You have Lake Cadillac proper, which is to the east of us, and we're over here on the, on the east shore of Lake Mitchell. Okay, and we're out here today, and well, we're gonna hopefully catch fish, and, but we're kinda looking for walleye. We are, we are. That, that is the predominant species of fish. There are northern pike, largemouth, smallmouth, crappie, bluegill, perch, and then, of course, everybody's favorite, best eaten fish in the world, walleye. Okay. Well, give me an idea how big this lake is. Lake Mitchell's probably about a 15 to 1800 acre lake. Uh, it average depth is four to six foot. There are some 20 foot holes, and that's where we set up when we're trolling for walleyes. There's one down here that runs along the east bank and along the south shore. And then there's another one that's up here straight to the north of us. What's the best way to fish them? Oh, well, I think the best way to catch walleye on Lake Mitchell is trolling with leech rigs. Of okay. course, it's a little early, you know, today's just the 4th of May. Water temperature 47.6 degrees at the surface. So we're gonna have crankbaits and leech rigs down. Uh, we will run a bottom bouncer right beside the boat and we troll slow, 1.7, 1.8 mile an hour. And we just work along where the weed line set up. And we can tell that by watching the graph. It's, we can actually see the weeds and we wanna be right up against them. As Randy was explaining the way to catch walleye on Lake Mitchell, Rick Dean decided to start fishing and caught a walleye. Well, Randy, enough talking, I want to catch a fish. Rick set the hook and said, okay, Tom, shut up and reel in this fish. No problem. Oh, you know what? I think that's a walleye. It is. Someone did pretty good. Net. In the net. All right. Right where he belongs. And he is a walleye. <laughs> How cool is that? A nice walleye, too. That looks like dinner right there. Has dinner written all over it. Yes, it does. Now, did you have a leech on that, too? Yes, or there was a leech on there, and he apparently swallowed that. All right. Just smallmouth that we caught last year trolling this same method was four and a half pounds. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Very nice smallmouth for inland lakes. And and that's the beauty about fishing on these inland lakes, Lake Mitchell, Lake Cadillac. There's a full bag of fish that you can catch them all in a single day. Well, you know what? Uh there's a good reason that Randy knows so much about the fishing in these lakes because he's a guide out here. Tell us a little bit about that. So I run Karma Sport Fishing Charter Service, which is an inland lakes guide program. It's just like fishing on the big lake. Just everything's in a smaller package. And I spend probably 100, 110 days a year out on Lake Mitchell, Lake Cadillac, and I'm paying attention to what the fish are doing because this is a family-friendly, affordable option for those people that want to go out and go fishing just for the fun of it, compared to going out on the big boats on the big lake and big water. Okay. Randy and I spent too much time talking that Rick finally said, okay, 
I'll catch the fish myself and started reeling in. Randy jumped up and netted it for him. In the net. Nice fish. Yeah. Nice, nice, fresh Lake Mitchell Northern Pike. You gonna eat him too? You betcha. They taste just as good as walleye. I want to thank you and Rick for bringing us out here fishing. We've got all kinds of fish today. Uh, what's the chances of getting those cooked up and eating them? Well, I think we could coordinate that and make it happen towards the tail end of your visit. Uh, we got plenty of fish, got some nice pike, got some nice walleye. And if we're really lucky and we find some morales with this weather coming around the way it is, we might be able to fry some of them up and add to the dinner. Oh man, my mouth is watering all right. Our next stop was at the DNR's Carl T. Johnson Hunting and Fishing Center. This was worth the trip to Cadillac by itself. It had so much to offer that it takes an interpreter to explain it. That's when we turned to our guide, Ed Shaw, the Carl T. Johnson Hunting and Fishing Center interpreter. Well, Ed, they got all kinds of nice displays in here. You know, we were overlooking at the bear display. I'm not sure, but I think one followed us over here. We have lots of bears in Michigan, and the, we have a lot in the Cadillac area. Okay, and yep. we've got one coming at us. Oh, they're bringing us lunch. <laughs> oh, man, I love that. Like <laughs> <lunch. laughs> I love the bears you've got here. <laughs> That's one thing we do have is good eats in Cadillac. <laughs> All right. Usually I think uh, Yogi's coming to steal our baskets, but today we got candy at the bear that's <laughs> bringing them to us. What a way to go. What do you say uh, we take these right now and head in and have some lunch, then we'll come back and take a look around here? Sounds good to me. When we first got here, we came into the center and first thing we got was lunch. So we wouldn't eat lunch, but the, you've got so much more in here, Ed. You've got actual displays that people can go through and learn a little bit about the fisheries and the, and the wildlife that's in the area. Yeah, here at the Carl T. Johnson Hunt and Fish Center, uh, our number one priority is education and uh, we teach about hunting, fishing, and shooting sports. But okay. all these displays, you can come through here and see all the patrons of Michigan, all the sport fish and uh, critters that can be hunted or trapped in Michigan and learn about them. Okay, and beautiful displays that are here too. I've seen been a lot of places, a lot of displays, but these are really nice. One of the things though I really like is where we're standing right now. We are with a, an original Ensemble River fly fishing Boat? Is yep. that what, what These would have been designed for fly fishing in our state. Um, I'm told it's one of three. And wow. uh, the only other one in Michigan that's an original boat is in uh, Lansing at the museum in downtown there, the Natural History Museum. Yep, I manage the Outdoor Skills Academy for the state. Um, it's a series of classes, so if you're interested in fly fishing, uh, you can come take a class and learn how to fly fish. And we take you down to the Manistee River and fish. Mm. So um, we do everything from upland gay bird hunting, turkey, whitetails, how to hunt bear um, to you name it. Ice fishing is really popular. So that's a fun one because we get to take you out on the ice and we spend a day or even two days in some courses uh, out on the ice fishing with you. So depending on what you're interested in, we have a class for you. And I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a look going around because I've got displays. you got several different rooms that uh, people can go into and look at different yep. types of displays. We're here in the fishing room, but we have a hunting <coughs> room also. And then we have an educational classroom. All right. it's, a, it's a phenomenal center. If you want to learn, you're in Cadillac, this should be your first stop. Whether you're heading for Tippy Dam or you're going to stay right here in Cadillac and fish on Lake Mitchell or Cadillac, we're here to help. So right here um, in our fishing room, we have our Oscar Peterson display. Uh, these were donated by Cliff Shogren, or we cap. Uh, these were his dad. So Oscar Peterson was a decoy carver, very unique. He's like the Van Gogh of the folk art world. These are very expensive. Um, decoys a lot of people collect them in auctions or even as fish plaques but it's very unique here we actually on thursday nights offer a carving class just all good reasons that you want to come up here to cadillac stop off here i know you'll enjoy every bit of it and you'll learn a lot it's a pretty unique thing randy has set up a float trip down the pine river with the owner of pine river paddle sports jake miltner 
Looks like fun, Randy. Joining us will be Lindsay Westorp, Marketing Manager for the Cadillac Area Visitors Bureau, and Marcy Hensley, the Office Administrator. I'm with Jake Meltman right now, and Jake is the owner of the Pine River Paddle Sports Center here on the Pine River. And uh, you know what? We're going to go out, we're going to do a little bit of paddling today. River looks like it's flowing pretty good, though. It is. We're still in springtime right now, so it's a little higher. As we prepare to take a float trip on this early spring day, Jake started giving us our seating arrangements and the best way to control the float. This will be a first for me. I've never gone down the river with four people in a raft. Now with instructions from Jake, we were ready to start floating down the Pine River. Looks like it's, it's, it's easy so far, but we've only gone about 10, 15 yards here, so <laughs> wish us luck. As we floated down the river, we soon came across a homemade swing into the water. That looks like fun, but a little too cold today. Beautiful, I love the weather. Pine River, it's a nationally recognized wild and scenic river. Um, used to be the second most paddled river in the entire nation, actually, in the 70s. Um, just a phenomenal stream, great trout stream. Um, it's got some class one white water on it, which is what a lot of people come for, is that little splash fun factor. So the lower section more has a little bit more class one white water in it. Some of the upper sections are a little calmer, so there's really something for everyone. Families, adventure seekers, um, it's, it's got it all. It's a, it's a beautiful Michigan stream. Jake was a great guide, but I think he was getting a little bored with the slow pace of all of us rookie river floaters. I seen him doing something as he was paddling away, but I couldn't believe my eyes. Yep, Jake was standing on his head in the canoe and steering it at the same time. Well, you know what they say, whatever floats your boat. My father started in 1971, so he just finished his 50th year last year wow. uh, my wife and I purchased the business this winter so um, I grew up in it um, my wife started working for uh, for the family when she was 17 and that's how we got to know each other and and uh, got married six years ago and decided we wanted to continue on the tradition so we, we purchased it this this winter yeah. very good very good now tell us something about the trips that you have well, uh, we operate primarily on the Pine River. We also operate on the Big Manistee River. Um, three day trips, two day trips, uh, day trips, multiple different options for day trips, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. Um, we can do longer trips on the Manistee. Um, and then we just started doing guided winter rafting trips two winters ago. We just finished our second winter doing that and that has been hugely popular. Um, personally, I mean, it is my favorite time of the year to be out there. The, the unique beauty that you get to see in the winter time. It is. is. It, yeah, you just dress for it and you get out there and you see some of the most spectacular things you have ever seen. Okay. So if anyone wants to get a hold of us, ask it, you know, questions, information, uh, thepineriver.com. You can call us. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. My wife is active with both of those. So you get to see some really cool clips and pictures of the, of the pine throughout the year, spring, summer, fall, and winter. So check us out. We'd love to get a follow from you. We'd love to see if we can get you out here yourself. After a day of floating on the beautiful Pine River, we were up for some good food. Lindsay said, come on guys, follow me. We followed Lindsay to a unique place, Coyote Crossing. We had a delicious lunch and took a couple of minutes to find out more about this restaurant and resort with owner Pete Finch. We came inside and I met Pete Finch, and Pete is the owner here at Coyote Crossing. And Pete, this looks like a really nice place that you've got here. Okay, now you've got a lot going on here. You've got cabins, and and I see a stage. Why don't you tell me some of the things that you do have here? Yes, we have ten uh, two-bedroom cottages here that are all handcrafted by the original owner uh, and his family built these these ten cottages which are real real nice they all have two bedrooms full bath uh, and a family and kitchen area that are uh, included and they're all basically exactly the same of the ten units and uh, yeah we have quite a bit of activities that go on here uh, year-round but in the summer um, we do a lot of uh, live music and have a concert series that uh, starts uh, around Memorial Day. Actually, this year we're starting a little earlier, May 13th, for a special event, but we do about 15 
uh, paid concerts on typically Saturday evenings throughout the summer, and then we do a, an open mic on Thursdays throughout mm -hmm. the summer. Okay, and we also have a nice restaurant here. What, what kind of yes. food do you have? Well, it, it's, we specialize in American fare, but we have uh, specialties uh, throughout the week. Uh, we're known for our fri Friday fish fry, and on Saturdays we do homemade smoked uh, beef brisket that our chef Abigail is uh, perfected and doing very well with. So, but uh, you can get everything from soups. Uh, we do a lot of uh, homemade soups, homemade desserts as well, and uh, we, we pride ourselves in some of the best food up here in the Northwood. All right, looking for a great place to stay? Come up here to Coyote Crossing. We sat down with Kathy Warren, the executive director of the Cadillac Area Visitors Bureau. She not only filled us in about the park on the water, but about this clever concept, the Cadillac Social District. We're at a beautiful park right here. Uh, I know everybody else went in the Clam Lake Beer Company over there, uh, which we're gonna join them in a yeah. minute, but we came back here. You have a beautiful park back here. Let me, tell me about it. Yeah, this is called the Cadillac Commons area. So we have a splash pad for the kids. We've got this fireplace here in the winter time. There's a portable ice rink here, but then we also have the city park over there with the fountain. The fountain's not quite going yet this year. It's a little too early, but that'll be soon. Rotary Pavilion and there's live music all summer long. Um, over on that side is the market building where we have a farmer's market a couple times a week and it's also a great community space. Uh, the Shea Locomotive also over here. It's just a nice welcoming open space for families and, and visitors and people to come and enjoy um, downtown Cadillac and the lakefront. And then also, as we've been talking about the social district, um, you're able to bring your drink down here. But um, as you can see over there, the water um, I mean, Lake Cadillac is right there. So there's paved walkways, so it's accessible for if somebody has a stroller, or somebody's in a wheelchair, or uh, you know wants kind of a flat surface, right. uh, they can uh, they can walk along the water. Um, and if you were to get really ambitious, you can do these seven and a half miles around the entire lake, really? um, which yeah. is really actually fun. It was it was a bucket list item for my uh, for me. My husband and I did it a couple of years ago, and um, it's really it's a really cool way to see all the way around the lake um it's it's very it was a very nice afternoon we stopped and grabbed ice cream along the way on the other side uh but it's just it's a nice gathering <laughs> spot in downtown cadillac okay and two we're just off main street absolutely and sometimes people don't even realize there's a big lake right here mm -hmm. um we are one block um just south of uh, mitchell street which goes through downtown cadillac it's also u.s uh business 31 131 uh loop and um and yeah people don't always realize that there's this amazing gem so we're working on some you know signage and things like that to make sure people realize that this is a really cool area right here in our downtown yeah don't forget to look around you get in town here and you're driving around Go back on some of the side streets, behind some of the main street. Absolutely. You'd be surprised what you can find sometime. You ready to go get a beer? Absolutely. Let's All go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was time to go mushroom hunting, and we were looking forward to going out for a couple hours and picking a basket full for our fish dinner at Randy's. How hard could it be, right? You would think by now, doing over a thousand shows that have taken me everywhere and done a little bit of everything, that I'd be a little more humble when it comes to learning new things about the outdoors. Well, I was about to be educated again. Well, as you can tell, we're out here in the woods and we are in the Manistee National Forest. Springtime of the year, springtime means morel mushrooms. I don't know a thing about them. I've always wanted to learn more. I brought a couple of experts with me. I have Aaron and Jill Grinchick, and you guys probably know better than anybody how to go out and find these and how to identify them, which is important because if you get the wrong ones, you're going to end up sick. Now, you got us out here in the woods. What are we actually looking for first to, to even know that they might be in the area? Topography plays a lot. It's uh, learn your trees um, as well as just get out there and keep your eyes open. It's going to be near water 10 times out of 10, um, whether it's a river or a stream or a low-lying swamp. And, you know, we're really fortunate to have so many lakes and rivers and streams in Michigan. For me, I like to scan out about 20 to 30 feet in front of me. I think there's a common misconception that you want to look straight down, but really, you know, you can cover a lot more ground if you actually, like, span, span your eye out and... Um, 
another great trick is if you found them in a certain spot, go back to that spot because okay. it's very likely that they'll come back. When I scan my eye out here, I can kind of, I'm getting kind of the texture and, uh, and let's look over here. <laughs> well, you got a lot better eyes than I do. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna stand here and I'm gonna let you look. <laughs> and I'll point to it. One. And I'm almost standing on one, <laughs> see? <laughs> Sometimes they're really small and delicate oh, like yep. that, and they just kind of blend right in. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, and here's another one right in front of me. Oh, there's another one. It's kind of just hiding. So a lot of times I get right to the base of the stem, I just give her a cut, and nice and clean. And the way I know that this is a real morale is when I cut this one in half, well, partially, my knife needs to be sharpened apparently, that's not a great example, but you can see how it's hollow, and right there you can see how the cap is a tape attached at the base of the stem. So we know that these are the real morales. Let's see if I can do a better job. This is a big one right here, the obvious one. We really don't need a knife necessarily. You know, I kind of take my fingernail in here and, and just kind of pinch her off. There, there we, go. we go. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a nice example right there. And what, what I'm showing here is the cap is attached right there. And on the false ones, there is a false morale. The false one will only be attached at the very top, kind of like an umbrella. And so the cap will only be attached there. And another thing about the false morale is that there's cotton on the inside, like a cottony pith. Well, that was great. And, and you guys make it look so easy that uh, I'm ready to get more. I don't know about you guys, I want to have them for dinner tonight. It's gonna be a hard time getting me out of the woods, Tom. I must admit that every time I do something new, it always turns into a lot of fun, and this time was no different, especially when I thought about the delicious dinner we were going to make with our fresh caught fish. Everyone had gone out of their way to make this a great trip, but Randy made it happen. It was only fitting that we ended up at Randy's incredible home, a home that him and his wife Kate designed in a perfect outdoor motif. Well, Randy, we have had such a great time up here in Cadillac. We have had so much fun looking around. It is actually my first time here that I've been around exploring. We have gotten out and done some fishing, which we're going to take advantage of tonight. We went out morale. We're going to take advantage of that again tonight. It's just been a great time. We really appreciate it. Well, you're certainly welcome. And Lake Mitchell treated us pretty decent and gave us some nice, fresh, walleye and northern pike that we're going to cook up for dinner tonight and we got some fresh picked morels that we're going to fry off to go with them and it should be should be an absolute culmination of a great three-day week in cadillac michigan as randy and i continued our conversation i noticed that rick got up and started preparing the meal and soon the ladies were helping fresh picked mushrooms fresh caught fish i think i better go and taste it and make sure that it's cooked right oh my that is delicious. The cooking was done and we all sat down and bowed our heads and said thanks for this incredible meal and an incredible week. Okay, okay, let's eat. Well, I hope you enjoyed our show on Cadillac, Michigan. So many things to do there and a lot of great people that we met along the way. If you'd like more information, you can go to our website at greatgetaways.tv. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.